All right, welcome back. I need a few more minutes here, so uh, it's just hard to tell the entire story of the Vietnam conflict in 15 minutes. So what I was describing last time where we left off was that in the uh, election race of 1968, which had been hugely controversial, Robert F. Kennedy ran against Richard Nixon, was probably ahead, and then was assassinated. And Nixon took office promising to reduce the scope and size of the Vietnam conflict and to get the United States out of Vietnam. And it turned out that in secret, he actually escalated the war and escalated it in a way that was illegal. He started bombing the neighboring countries of Laos and Cambodia to try to cut off this Ho Chi Minh Trail, which was going through those countries to actually supply the South. Uh, the destabilization that happened in Cambodia specifically led to the rise, ironically, of uh, another communist dictator named Pol Pot, who murdered a hundred, uh, well, thousands and thousands. I don't know if it was hundreds of thousands, but he murdered thousands of his own people uh, in massacres that were, Cambodia came to be called the killing fields during this period. Um, so the United States inadvertently caused the destabilization of another country. Interestingly enough, and this has some parallels to what the United States was doing in Afghanistan. By bombing Al-Qaeda targets in Pakistan, we were doing the same kind of thing that Nixon was doing in Cambodia. Um, thankfully, it hasn't completely destabilized Pakistan, although that might be a little bit debatable. So we saw these major campus protests erupt. And by 1970, there were protests on almost every college campus in America. Um, the hippie movement was in full swing. And then very, very famously in uh, Kent State University at Ohio, the National Guard was called in against days long anti-Nixon protests and four students were shot dead. And this led to, I believe a Crosby, Stills and Nash hit song about four dead in Ohio. It was a huge national story and the resistance to the Vietnam War was only growing and growing and growing. Only 11 days later, um, in 1970, more student protesters were shot at by police in Jackson State University in Mississippi. Two died on this night, and one of the mothers very famously said, they're killing our babies in Vietnam and here in our own backyard. This was a major national story. So eventually there was a lot of pressure put on the Nixon administration to withdraw from Vietnam. This did not actually get done until three years after these murders on college campuses. By 1973, finally, South Vietnam was promised by the, by the Nixon administration continued support with their military specifically if they would agree to a ceasefire. So eventually, there was an end to the hostility with the United States in 1973. And although the government of South Vietnam temporarily existed, by 1975, the communists had pretty much taken over. The morning of April 30th, communist forces captured the presidential palace in Saigon and the Vietnam War was over. Vietnam became one unified country under the communist party. And today it is still one unified country. So unlike North Korea, which did remain divided in a North, Northern communist state and a Southern non-communist state, Vietnam, successfully ousted the United States. Again, the only war that the United States has ever lost or surrendered. And this left a lasting legacy. So I wonder if you could respond in the comments, what did you think were the most interesting or shocking aspects of this conflict? Are you surprised that the United States was meddling in the affairs of another nation? Like we talked about in the Cold War unit, basically had a democratically elected leader um, pushed out of an election through election rigging and then supported a terrible dictator who eventually they turned on and had assassinated. So it begs a very interesting question. You know, what if the United States never did get involved in Vietnam? Some things may have been really, really different in history. You can never really answer those what if questions. But anyway, uh, leave a reply or submit an assignment and let me know what the most interesting aspect of this presentation was to you. Take care, everybody.